Hello and welcome to Experiment 1's pre-practical lecture for CNY 385. <clears throat> In this experiment, we will be looking at tris acetyl acetyl nato cobalt 3 and the subsequent nitration of that complex. Here is the 3D molecular structure of tris acetyl acetyl nato cobalt. And um, we will be synthesizing this along with its nitrated um, counterpart. So let's get into it. essentially let's first look at your ligand uh, which you will start off with. You will start with acetyl 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 acetonata uh, which is abbreviated ACAC uh, for short. So for now I'll be using the word ACAC because you can hear I clearly can't pronounce the full name correctly and um, here is its 3D structure so it's five carbons with two carboxyl groups <coughs> or two CO groups connected at the, th the second and the fourth uh, carbon, uh, depending on which way you co go, but the second and the fourth carbons. And essentially, they usually form either bis or tris um, co coordination compounds with metals. And we will be especially be interested in the tris um, coordination in this practical. So the ac, -AC is usually a negatively charged ion or ligand. Um, which we will get into exactly why it is negatively charged and how that then leads to coordination. And then, of course, that uh, what big benefit of these kinds of ligands is that this is an organic molecule, is that we can use organic solvents um, to help with the synthesis of this, as you will see in your practical guide. Um, of course, there are many applications of these. I just wanted to include this for interest sake. They're used as catalysts in organic synthesis, as well as some precursors for industrial cat catalysis, because they're actually a good leaving group um, from your metal ion. Ah, just as a general indication of what they are. So let's delve more into ACAC, -AC, the ligand itself. So the ACAC -AC ligand is well suited for chelation. And as you should know, chelation is when one ligand bonds uh, or bonds coordinates to a metal center in more than one fashion. So in other words, let's say for example, it only bonded in a one of the oxygens bonded to a metal ion, then it wouldn't have been chelation. So if you have a metal ion in there and both these oxygen atoms coordinate to the metal ion, you have a six-membered ring. And that then of course is chelation. Um, otherwise, Quickly Google what chelation means, and you should find a few handy pictures to guide you. Um, you can have you can substitute any of these methyl groups, and you can have some extended forms of the ac, -AC ligand. But for this practical, we will be only focusing on the ac, -AC ligand as drawn here. And now the important thing about this ligand is that it has a ketoeno form, and we call this ketoeno tautomerization, which is something you will actually look in more into more in organic chemistry. But essentially what that means is a hydrogen from this carbon can move to there and we can have some electron delocalization across this pseudo six membered ring then to form something that looks sort of like benzene not benzene but a pseudo six membered ring and which is a which is a more stable form of um, this this is called the keto form because it's ketones this is called the enol form because it's sort of like an alcohol. You see there's, that's, if you look at it like that, that's an alcohol. And if you look at it like that, that is also an alcohol. But they both share the same hydrogen because of the delocalization of the electron. And this then allows us to do some interesting chemistry. Um, taking your ac, ac ligand in its enol form and deprotonating that hydrogen leaves us then with sort of a ring with a negative charge. And then hopefully you can see that this negative charge will then lead to easy coordination to a positive metal center. So imagine our cobalt three plus ion sitting there would be most happily or most readily accept a negative charge from this ligand to coordinate in a very strong X fashion, as I believe you did in CMY285. You learned about X and L type ligands. So two X type bonds or coordination bonds that will form here. And of course, that forms a conjugated six-membered ring, 
which is more stabilized, hence favoring coordination. And that is why at at ligands form coordination compounds. Okay. So I hope this was a very nice introduction. And you understand essentially why ac at ligands form compounds. So that is all you take from it, and you think, great, ac at ligands form compounds, and they have things called keto enoforms. That's also perfectly fine. Um, moving a bit on from just um, the, the, uh, the eno form or the ac at ligand itself, um, looking at it in a metal complex, typically what we will look at is something like cobalt 3 plus with three ac at ligands coordinated, so tris ac ac. And this forms that shoe that six membered ring that I mentioned. So there you can see a six membered ring if we coordinate uh, or it chelates, uh, the ac ac ligand chelates. You can imagine if it only co coordinated through this one oxygen and the other oxygen did not coordinate, we would not have this stabilization effect. And um, essentially, this then leaves us with a more activated or more reactive species um, than what we started. Well, um, take that depending on what you have here in the center, but um, in its own right, a more reactive species. Okay, so looking a bit forward to essentially what we're able to do in our practical. So I've now mentioned already it is now a more reactive species once it's coordinated and just the normal ac ac ligand on its own. Is the reason I mentioned that is we will react an ac ac lig or an ac ac complex with, or we will nitrate it, so meaning react it, to form a nitrated version of it. So as you can see here, we have a tris ac ac ligand or ac ac complex. And here we have a tris nitrated form of it. And each of these C3 carbons, we've now added an NO2 group. And um, I've sort of given away the first answer of the questions I've asked here. Uh, where will the reaction take place? And the obvious answer should be there, because if you think in terms of electronegativity, um, your most reactive carbon should be that one, because it's the most electronegative for electrophilic aromatic substitution. And then, yeah, so then I ask a second question. How will this nitration then affect your metal center, as well as how is this going to affect the bonding properties in this case versus that case? So these are all things we will look at it at in this prac. Essentially, these these three questions. We will synthesize this, we will nitrate it, and we we'll look at the effects of this or the differences between this type of complex versus that type of complex. But of course, we also have a little we have a bit of a hypothesis uh, as well to what we expect. Turning to our hypothesis, uh, to answer the two questions of how is the bonding going to be affected and the electronic structure of the metal going to be affected, if we look at our electrochemical series, and you should remember this from second year, our ac ac ligand is somewhere around about here, so slightly to the weak field side of things, between water and NC kappa S. Um, and we, so in other words, it's a weak field ligand, so we expect it to be slightly high spin. Well, high spin. Let's speak of it high spin. But then, what will the effect be of a subsequent nitration at the C3 position on this ligand? Well, the nitro, the nitro group or the NO2 group is electron withdrawing. So in other words, it's going to draw electron density away from our chelated ring that we've seen before. And this effect then causes our ligand to shift more to more weak field. In other words, our complex will become more high spin. Electronically, that means the energy levels will separate, large, will become, or the energy difference in between the energy levels become larger, because it's a high, more high spin, higher energy transition complex. We expect a higher energy transition between the homo lumo gap than with just normal ac ac between these two. Okay, so that is sort of what we expect. Just let's just summarize that.
uh, hypothesis for ACAC ligand coordinated and then subsequent nitrated reacted ACAC ligand is that our ACAC ligand is going to react at the C3 carbon due to the aromatic character of that C3. Remember the, key, the ring, essentially the ring. That's, you need to remember it looks like benzene. Then the NO2 is withdrawing. That's going to lead to a weak field ligand, which means it's going to become a more high spin complex. And essentially bonding properties, that means it becomes a, some, something called a weaker pi donor than normal ACAC. You might not know what that means at this stage, but essentially you know, the words here mean weaker pi donor. So donor, it's a weaker donor of electron density. Why? Because the NO2 is withdrawing electron density. So this slide is just to answer my previous three questions I asked. Okay, now how are we going to test our hypothesis. Um, that is where our practical steps come in. So to test the hypothesis, we will synthesize cobalt ACAC3. So just cobalt ACAC. This is the 3D structure of it. We'll then perform a subsequent nitration on it to form the nitrated version. And then we will confirm whether on with IR um, uh, with IR of the free ac, -AC ligand, so meaning normal just ac, -AC and our two synthesized products, so this product and that product, where did the nitration actually take place? Which one of these carbons did it take place? In other words, with IR, we will be able to investigate where did the shift, what shift occurred where? And in other words, if nitration took place, for example, on C4 or C2, or, you know, there would be a different shift compared to C1 or C5 or just C3. Um, of course, you might notice that this is a symmetrical molecule. So C1 and C5 is the same atom and C2 and C4 are the same atom, you know. Um, but just for brevity's sake, I've put in all of them there. So that's how we're going to test our hypothesis. We will also test this using UV vids. So we're going to look at delta O and compare our UV vis of both complexes to ensure, to see what happens. So we expected the one to be more high spin than the other. And I was to have more high energy transitions or a higher energy transition than the other one. Or at least this one's high, energy transitions will be of higher energy than this one's energy transitions. So we will we'll compare that with our UV vis spectra and see if it compares to what we expected. Okay. So just a few practical notes. Um, what will you do in the lab, essentially? In your first synthesis, you're going to synthesize tris uh, cobalt ac ac or tris ac ac cobaltate or whatever. Um, and you'll start by oxidizing cobalt 2 um, using um, hydrogen peroxide. You need to add dropwise, remember why, because it's very reactive, and there will be a lot, uh, well, it should, CO2 should be bubbling out from the CO3. And you can use that as an indication for the reaction completeness. Um, of course, there will be experimental videos, this, oh, there is experimental videos for you to watch as well. This is just like a short summary of what you need to be looking out for. Um, then you're going to you remove any excess material with ethanol, you will then finally remove polar impurities, meaning like the first product. Uh, that's actually supposed to be impolar or impolar impurities, my apologies. Um, with the bis product, like the bis product with toluene. So remember the bis product will have an act -ac ligand on one side and an act -ac ligand on the other side. And that's going to um, then essentially cancel out one another. And finally, we will precipitate using heptane which leads to a purified product and then essentially just argue that your product is soluble in toluene but insoluble in heptane and your, pure, your impurities is soluble in toluene. So that is how we complete this separation. So I've also given you some ideas of your, uh, for, your, goodness, for your assignment here. You'll see some of the assignment questions um, answers are here on this slide.
Next, you're going to nitrate the cobalt ac ac uh, ligand or complex, my apologies, uh, using copper nitrate, uh, trihydrate, and acetic anhydride. Acetic anhydride and is hygroscopic. In other words, it means you need to use a dried flask. And you can look up what that word specifically means, but I think a dried flask sort of strongly implies what it means. Uh, you will precipitate it from oil. And this is actually a saponification reaction, which you, is a term you can look up. Um, it's also part of the assignment to look that up. You'll finally wash this with cold ethanol and recrystallize this from a chloroform ethanol mixture, which essentially it's soluble in chloroform, but insoluble in ethanol and are impurities if it's not soluble in chloroform. Okay. Then you're going to characterize. Well, when I say you are going to characterize, I mean you will be provided with spectra of the characterized products um, for both your cobalt ac ac and the nitrated ac ac. Essentially, the only reason we won't characterize each of yours is because yours might not necessarily be pure. We will take your small group and expose you to the technique as we will do throughout the course. Um, and then you're going to compare your key frequencies to allude to where does the NO2 and the CO, is the NO2 present and did the CO shift um, occur as you expected. Of course, your UV viz is also going to give you an indication of which one is high spin or higher spin than the other. Well, neither of these are really low spin. Um, but which one is higher spin or lower spin than the other. And you're going to compare primary absorption bands for that. And then you're going to compare this with just that of the free ac ac ligand to ensure that you've actually uh, coordinated the ac ac ligand and you just don't have pure ac ac um, in more in solid state form. Also, finally, just a note on what your report needs to entail. Remember, you're always writing full reports for CMY385 um, along with an assignment. So your one PDF, so you submit one PDF on ClickUp through Turnitin. That needs to have a title, which is not just a copy from a manual. And of course, all these things you've been taught in second year how to write. You still have access to the report writing guide on ClickUp. So if you have forgotten how to write some of these sections, please don't please have a peruse that report writing guide. And um, also do not hesitate to Google what these sections are good uh, or what these sections entail. Right, so let's go again. Um, a title, please don't copy from the manual. Um, you need to have an introduction. Remember, always have the aims, the background, all well formulated in there. In your method section, Note your deviations and your different quantities use, used. Uh, you need to have a results section, a discussion section, a conclusion section, and then your assignment questions, your answers or your questions one through, uh, you know, for, from question one right through, and then a full reference list using the Royal Society of Chemistry referencing style, as we give to you in that table format. You can use that as a guide and remember to use in-text citations. So you need to use the number system, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. You know, all your references and then numbered at the end of your document. If you know how to use, you can use Mendeley, you can use by hand, that is up to you. Okay, just a final summary, just to bring it all together again. Our overall aim is we want to look at the reactivity and the effects on electronic structure of an ac ac containing coordination complex of cobalt. So essentially, we're going to synthesize the ac ac complex, we're going to react it, and we're going to characterize both of them. That's what you're going to do. So, synthesize, nitrate, analyze. Easy as that. Okay. And some final notes. Remember, there are experimental videos for you to take you through the most important steps for the practical. So, these are so you can see exactly what colors to expect, what you can, what you need to do where, and that can help you to thoroughly prepare um, for your practical. So please watch the videos, make notes, flow diagrams. Remember your MSDS sheets that need to be sort of preferably summarized. 
actually summarized, but preferably summarized. And then do not forget the assignment is a full report plus uh, assignment question. That's one PDF document with everything in it. There's no different sections or whatever. It's one submission for 100 marks. That is due before the start of your next practical session, unless you want the penalty system to come into effect. Okay. Thank you for watching.